Hey everyone, Cyber Gamer here, and welcome back to another episode of our Seopolis Let's Play. Today we're going to be getting into some mechanism, automating quite a bit. We're going to be automating our thermal, and we get to go visit some new places. Come check it out! Alright, welcome back. The sun's setting in the background because the rest of the base hasn't rendered. So I did do a little bit of stuff in between episodes. I did figure out what was wrong with the mob spawner. And it was totally me being a dirt. So with the spawner that I was using, I was sticking the gold egg in there. Yeah, I'm retarded. That's not what you stick in there. So with the mob grinding utilities, you get this mob swad. So you take the mob swad. Craft it super cheap. You right click the mob that you're trying to get a spawn egg for, and you'll actually be able to get the specific spawn egg for the mob that you're trying to spawn. Then you stick that egg here, insert the little jellies, and it'll just continuously spawn the mob over and over again. As of right now, we have plenty of leather, some wood, lots of meat, some wool, not wood, <laughs> uh, lots of meat, some hearts, all that good stuff. I also went ahead and set up the automation for our overworld matter. And I'm using refined stores to do it. But so right here, so I have an input for pattern, two clay balls, one tin or chunk, and 50 leaves, and that makes 40 over matter. So this right here, the fluid duct, you're able to make the copper can. You'll right click some overworld matter into the can, and that actually sets it to overworld matter. You put it here and it filters it. So I have a redstone torch. Went ahead and made a little redstone line just so I could add more. So I have four of these that are constantly on, constantly going, but they're all filtered to overworld matter, so they'll only spill that out. So I have importers for refined, pulling them back into the storage. Over here, I have my auto heavy sieve. So I made a pattern to craft the compressed overworld matter. So we'll set compressed overworld matter in here to export. Right here is a crafting upgrade. And what this does is if this exporter requests for compressed overworld matter and we do not have any in our inventory it will request to craft the compressed overworld matter and since that craft requires regular matter that ends up asking this to go ahead and send in the items for overworld matter so that way it can send the compressed version to this sieve also started setting this room up for connections to autocraft so i actually do have some Crafting recipes in here. This right here, I don't know if I explained it last episode, is a network receiver. So with refined storage, you do have wireless options for your refined storage system. You can put a network transmitter hooked up on one end of your system, and that's where I have these. These are all four transmitters that are transmitting to four different locations, one being the mob farm, one being the automation room you just saw. I think the other one goes over to uh, the old tinker room where the automation rooms are. So you place this network transmitter. You'll have to craft a network card. You take that network card and you'll shift right click the network receiver and you can place that wherever you want. Once you do that, it gets its actual coordinates. And that's where it says link to blah, blah, blah. You put that in the transmitter. This shows that the network receiver is actually 100 blocks away. So I've just got a cable going out and it actually gets the importers to pull all the items. This pulls in the compressed ores. This pulls in the non-compressed ores. I did set up filters for all the stuff that doesn't get compressed. So that way only those items will come into this chest and that's all that's being exported. Well, imported storage. We're gonna add some more solar panels up there. I do have an idea for a permanent power gen uh, system. We're gonna start out using mechanism before we get into the major generators. Uh, there is extreme reactors or Mechanism. Mechanism has big generators and extreme reactors has them. Today, we're going to go adventuring. So in the ocean exploration quest line, they have these map generators. So here's the base one. It just gives you a map. Then you have the map generator, ocean monument, leviathan, and warped garden. Warped garden is those trees that we saw when I was driving around in the submarine uh, at the very bottom of the ocean. Ocean monument. Everybody knows what that is. This temple. And then the... Uh, Leviathan, I believe that's the uh, bone structure that we tore down when we early on in the beginning of the map. So I already made those. Once you make these, 
they take the base map generator to make the other three. The annoying, the probably the only annoying part of this crafting recipe is this compass. You have to use the casting table, pouring four ingots over redstone. Which wouldn't seem that bad, except for the fact that you have to do it for every single map. And each map generator takes four maps and a compass. So it's five compasses per map generator. And it just gets a little tedious. But, again, not too big of a deal. So we have the Warped Garden Explorers map. We have the Ocean Explorers map. And we have the Leviathan Explorers map. Now when I looked at the Leviathan, it looks like it's a bone structure. That was right next to our base. So we're not too worried about that. The Ocean Explorers map... Is showing us a temple. Looks to be to our northwest. So we'll definitely go check that out. And the warped garden doesn't look to be too far. It's probably the same one we already saw. And that one's just down on the ocean floor. So we'll go check that out. Each one wants you to kill a mob. The Leviathan wants you to kill a husk. The temple wants you to kill a guardian. And then the warped garden wants you to kill a drowned. So I did end up setting. An enchanting setup. So we got the table. We got the full enchanted gear. So, boom. Went ahead and upgraded from diamond to netherite. Got the helmet enchanted. It's not fully, fully enchanted. Uh, we got protection for respiration, aqua affinity. Definitely wanted that at respiration. Just in case potion runs out. I don't instantly die not too long after. We got a little more protections in, on our boots. We got the shadow steps. So mobs aren't running straight at us. Feather falling and depth striders. So we move faster in the water. So, let's go on an adventure. So that is the warped garden that we're going after. So, I did switch to the cleaver instead of that axe. The axe is definitely too slow for the warm-up. I don't need any of the... No, I've already killed a drown. But that quest is complete. Ooh, we got warped fungus. Nice. We can actually use those in the botany pots. Lots of gold, nether quartz. Okay, okay. Alright. Since that's done, let's go check out... Now, if you're not familiar with these maps, it's always the top is north, but down south, left, east. Left, west. Right, east. Your dot will kind of help you help guide you to okay here's our guardian temple so we're gonna get mining fatigue but with the jetpack and the sword I really don't foresee any issues oh another thing I forgot to show you so you have this heart amulet you can make the heart canisters there's red yellow green and blue so once and you can stack them up to 10. Each one will give you an extra heart. So 10 red ones give you 10 more hearts. 10 yellow ones give you 10 more hearts. 10 green and 10 blue. So I've got 20 extra hearts on this necklace. So it's definitely going to help. Especially with the armor and all that. I think I think we'll be alright. I think we can take on a temple. Found him! Yay! Temple has been defeated. Well, that's not fair. This one's got emeralds. My starting one didn't have emeralds. Okay, so that takes care of all those. I do want to go to the nether, so we're going to need to make a map generator for the fortress, which takes necrotic bone, which does drop from Wither Skeletons, but you can also craft it by pouring two panes of obsidian which is half a block over a bone and you'll get the necrotic bone so that won't be too bad it's just some nether bricks which we can cook nether rack for that the other map is the bastion remnant which just takes the blaze rods so we'll get some blaze powder crafted up smelt it on down into the rods and then we'll be able to make the bastion i do want to take one of each of these with me before we go to the nether and knock out this one knock out most of these hopefully and if we're super lucky oh Oh, right there. That's a good idea. 
wonder if I can swab him. Just spawn him over and over again. That'd be a cool supply of wither skulls. I'm gonna try that out. And them too. Got two spawn. We'll see. Alright. Anywho. I'm gonna get back to base and get that stuff ready. We'll make our nether portal and be back. So we got our fortress map generator and we have our bastion remnant map generator. So we got both of those knocked out. We have our nether portal here. Probably not gonna be permanent or pretty, pretty most definitely not gonna be permanent, but let's get to it. Avoid sky block. So it's just gonna be the fortress and the bastion. Oh. Me spawn next to oh 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 okay well that answers that question. I core blood shroom. That's interesting. Okay, well we know the heights of thing. Uh, it looks like it's the same as Overworld. We're gonna go ahead and break this. Get our bastion map. Now, I don't know if these need to be broken in the dimension that we're going to be using. I would assume that has something to do with it. I'm not sure. So, Bastion south to us. And a fortune. I think it's way west. Bastion looks closer. Uh. So, Do an RF in and get going. I doubt it would be that high. Oh! Mistakes were made. Well, hello, boys and girls. Today's safety lesson is make sure your jetpack is on before you jump off. Yeah. I turned it off because it was making me jump on the map block. And yeah. So that's a thing. But luckily, I guess this, because this was the lowest platform, it spawned my grave on top of the portal. So I was actually able to combine an interpro with my key, teleport over here, and I just landed on top of the portal. Able to get my stuff. So now let's actually try and get to the bastion. And it was south. Okay, jet back on. And let's go. And we are here at the bastion. Uh, the quest wants us to get a magma, kill a magma cube, a brute, and a regular piglin. Okay, we got something to do. Guys are sitting over here jamming. Oh, does he have a jukebox in his backpack? That's funny. So the backpack does have a jukebox upgrade, and it's not, I guess. Uh, yeah, right here, jukebox upgrade. So I guess that pig has a jukebox, and it's just walking around listening to music. Okay, well, that's a problem solved. Okay. So I'm gonna run back to base so I can get some swabs to make sure if I run into any skellies, I can grab them. And we are here. Okay, so first thing I want to do is take that out of my hand. I'm gonna get some Can I have your DNA? Thank you. So many feathers. With the beheading, it should get quite. Uh, the cardboard box from Mechanism is a way if you wanted to grab the spawner itself and set up a mob farm that way. You can use the Mechanism cardboard box that, I sh that we went over in the beginning and use the cardboard on the spawner, break the cardboard box, bring it back to your base, and when you place it and take the cardboard box off, you'll actually be able to use the spawner. I don't see any other mobs that I'd like to collect, so let's kill some skellies and see how that goes. Okay, so the spawner I had failed setting up the first time actually helped us get our wither skull heads. So I stayed around the fortress for a while, killing all 
quite a bit of wither skulls. I don't know, I probably killed 30, 40 of them. And didn't get a single wither skull, even with the cleaver. I don't have the actual beheading modifier on it, but it still should pretty have a pretty good chance. But anywho, so I do have beheading on all of these. I put 10 for the max. I went and swabbed the wither skull, made the egg, and I stuck it in the spawner. So every time I get a jelly baby, jelly, jelly baby, <laughs> uh, the XP thingies, uh, it'll get fed into there and summon the skull. And right now we have another five in here. So that actually takes care of that. So now we need four soul sand, three skulls to make the wither. Okay, let's give this a shot. I'm actually gonna kinda do it under here. I think it'll work, but I'd rather not have it up high. I don't have enough C-Bucks to get the quest reward scale. I was gonna call it a fin, but the scale that actually lets you be protected against the toxic air. So I'm gonna try and summon him down here and we will see how this goes. Everybody excited? Oh, -ho. so come out here. Let him do his thing. There he goes. Get all the way out. Not too bad. We're gonna do it. So the water helps. He's not gonna try and fly away from me. I don't actually know how my health is doing. Let's do it. Sorry, buddy. Gotta have it. It is done. We have now defeated the wither. All right, we got ourselves another star. Heck yes. Well worth it. All right, and we got some more wither schools. That spawner's gonna keep getting more and more wither schools for us, so we'll be able to have some more done yet. We'll be able to have plenty more wither skull fights. We will be able to automate killing the wither. That was close. If I kept going, I probably would have died. Alright, but we had a good little adventure. We went to the nether. Uh, there is the Twilight Dimension in this pack. Not sure when I'll be going there, but we definitely want to head there, check it out. A lot of fun. It's a lot of boss fights. I've played it in multiple packs. So, definitely going to be checking that out. Now that we've got all this stuff finished. We are getting that much closer to our 200 ra range, and then we'll be able to get that scale. Let's see what this nether star is. Infinity range booster. This will actually allow me to be able to use my controller wherever I'm at in the world. So, but that actually costs. There's a nether star here. This is nether stars of four, so 13 nether stars. Do need to get some building going probably on the next episode. I want to get the power gen room done. I'm going to be starting mechanism this episode, and then we should be getting into the industrial going here pretty soon. But I'm going to start throwing up some stuff for mechanism, getting that started. The craft for mechanism, the first machine, the metallurgy confuser. Not bad. Pretty, pretty basic. The unfortunate recipe to begin with the enrichment changer. I have not checked anything else, but this requires two crushers for mechanism, which each crusher requires two pulverizers from thermal, each of which is requiring the machine case, and then this pulverizer. Now I have begun doing the auto crafting, so we, I showed you the machines earlier. We do have some auto crafts in here as well. So we've got all this stuff auto crafted. Most of the stuff I've auto crafted is for refined. We've got compressed crushed granite for any type of lava generation we might want to use it for. The upgrades, we got storage patterns, 
little small stuffs here and there but I definitely want to be adding to this especially getting more automation done with the thermal and being able to craft all those blocks used for the machines alrighty I'll be back okay so I did get some more mechanism going I am mean, I had made four metallurgic infusers and the enrichment chamber I've also upgraded them to the basic tier that allows them to cook three items mechanism actually has four different tiers for their machines so you got basic advanced elite and ultimate each with increasing increments of how many items they can create we have three five seven all the way up to nine for the ultimate tier installer i've also hooked them up with refined for auto crafting so we've got crafters to put in patterns and for the catalyst i have them being continuously f kept full so i set up crafts for all four of the different catalysts for the main cooking recipes there's other stuff that you can use you can make ingots with the infusing factories and different stuff like that but for the most part we're just going to be using coal redstone diamond and the refined obsidian so i put exporters over here that are filled with crafting upgrades so they will request the enriched obsidian as soon as this drops allowing me to have auto crafts and anytime i do any kind of big request for an auto craft it'll automatically start requesting the catalyst to be crafted in the enrichment chamber and then filled up over here now I am using the enriched versions, and the reason for that is you get eight times more from it. So if you use redstone, you get 10 millibuckets, but if you enrich it, you get 80 millibuckets. So just sticking it in the enrichment chamber just makes it eight times more efficient, which is way better. But this is our little mechanism setup so far. So we'll see where it goes. And I think that's where we'll go ahead and end today's episode. I have been getting some more patterns done, increasing how much automation our system's able to do. I've been adding more patterns to the machines that we have in our machine room over there. Now we've got Overworld Matter pretty much automated, so we'll get some ores coming in. But if you like the video, hit that thumbs up button for me. And if you'd like to check out the next episode, if you hit that subscribe button with the bell, you'll get notified when I release it. And I appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with me. See you next time.